Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams again, and today we are going to solve using the normal distribution, but we are going to solve backwards. So this is part one of a series of videos. So let's get started. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the fundamental characteristics of a standard normal distribution to help us to solve for an unknown value. And we're capable of solving for any unknown value provided that we make this assumption of normality. So I can solve for an unknown value of x on the horizontal axis of the curve. I can solve for an unknown value of the standard deviation or I could solve for an unknown value of the mean. And what we use to our benefit is the idea that a z-score is nothing more than the distance that x falls from the mean expressed in standard deviations. And so if I have a z-score located here, associated with that value of x, the z-score simply says, how far does that value of x fall from the mean? And since a normal curve only speaks the language of the standard deviation, it expresses this distance in standard deviations. So if we take and deconstruct this z-score formula, you end up with what I refer to as the magic formula, which says x is simply a value that is located the mean plus z times the value, the standard deviations from the mean. And we're able to always use a positive sign in this formula because we know that a z-score that falls over here below the mean will inherently have a negative value, which will turn this portion of the formula into a negative number, forcing you to go below the mean towards negative infinity. So how does that really work? So ladies and gentlemen, basically it's a four-step process. First, you would determine the value for which you are solving. So in other words, do I want to know the uh, value of x? Do I want to know the value of the mean of the distribution? Or do I want to know the standard deviation? You can also solve for two of them if you solve simultaneous equations, which causes me to put a big sad face there, but it is something you can do. Then you're going to calculate the area under the curve because we know that the curve is symmetrical and I know that I have 50% of the data on one side, 50% on the other side, which gives me a total area of 1, which makes this an easy calculation, causing me to have a happy face. Then I'm going to look up a z-score associated with that area. And I'm going to do this using a standard normal distribution table but I'm going to go inside and look around in what I like to think of as the guts of the table, which is basically the inside of the table, and then I'm going to apply the magic formula to allow me to solve for that unknown value, which gives me another happy face. So remember that when we use the standard normal distribution table, I'm going to use a z-score equal to 0 0.44 for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to look up my 0 0.4, pick up my 4, and I know that here it gives me 0 0.1700 percent of the data or 17% of the data falls between that value of z and the mean. And that's where we're going to 
use this idea of the guts of the table. So if I had located an area inside the curve that had 0.3078% of the data located in it, I would go through my table and I would look and I would look and I would look and there's 0 0.3078. What I know is that going back this way, 0.87, that in a standard normal distribution, that 30.3078 or 30.78% of the data falls plus or minus 0.87 standard deviations from the mean. And so when I say go into the guts of the table, you're going to look for the quantity of data of interest, figure out the z-score associated with it. One nice way to remember this is to say if you are solving from inside the curve out, go inside the table and then go out. So um, I will see you guys in the next video.